Hey guys, Jim Bounds with Co-op Motor Works and Motorhome Rehab Ranch on Patreon. Hey ranch hands. Well you kind of wonder why we didn't wait to put the motor in before we yanked the front end off, you know. Um, actually this was the easiest way to do it. This trans mode <coughs> um, obviously uh, got whacked. Um, the front end uh, was apart. We have an original front clip that's not been installed. So we're going to put that on. This gives us a great idea to look at different things. And on uh, the daily pose, or, or we're going to call it uh, uh, Ranch Life Chronicles. Yeah, like that. But anyway, over there, <clears throat> we're going to talk about some other things like, that will tie into the Chipmunk Cheeks video, right? I can, I'll be able to show you some video, some uh, pictures, some really cool stuff. But today, <clears throat> I'm going to answer Elizabeth's question. Thank you, Elizabeth, for uh, sending it out. And thank you for uh, getting the motor home and having fun with it. All right. But Elizabeth asked about insulating the inside of the cab from the engine from heat. She said they live in Arizona and it gets hot in there. She's uh, considering going to headers and stuff like that, and she's concerned about that. And that's a good one, okay? So, so that's what we're going to talk about today. And by the way, Elizabeth, uh, love your name. Uh, my, uh, my dock is on Lake Elizabeth, about half a mile away. Uh, Scarlett's going to drop in a picture right there. Yeah. Unfortunately, the dock is two pallets. have been there for two years, and I can't walk on it anymore. It died. But we're going to go put a new one in there, uh, Elizabeth. So Lake Elizabeth with the dock will, will live again. So look, let's go inside this baby. Well, there is an inside. We've about ripped it all out. Come on in. I'm going to show you some stuff about the floor. Ah! How about this? Uh, just a little bit of wood left. We'll talk about it. Come on in. Come on in. All right. So, uh, here it is. This is the wood floor in the cab of the coach. All right. So, if you look at it, wood is a good insulator, by the way. Wood's a very good insulator. And in this wood and this wood, it's a good place for wood as an insulator. Now, the problem with it, if you look over there at the corner, how it's all eaten out, that's what happens because the A-frame window goes right down there and rots it out. There's no problem. <clears throat> you can replace this wood. See, this, this side here is done too. But you can replace this wood. It's not a structural member. It's more a three-quarter inch wood as a uh, insulator. So you can replace this piece of wood, take the screws out, and take this piece of wood, take the screws out, and you can replace this piece of wood, okay? Now you say, well, I need marine grade plywood. Do you know what the difference is in regular plywood and marine grade plywood? There are no voids in the plies. You know, a void in a boat wouldn't be cool. So that's the only difference. It's the same glue, it's the same wood, same everything. So... <clears throat> You could replace this, these three pieces with new three-quarter inch plywood and be just fine. Okay, now you say, well, what can I do to insulate this more and the top? All right, wood is a good insulator, okay? Now, if you have an insulation, uh, a fiber insulation sheet, and the heat comes from here, if it gets so much heat, that it gets as hot as the heat is, it will transfer, it gets saturated, okay? So, <clears throat> I'm not a big fan of putting insulation on the bottom side of this wood, okay? Uh, what we do is we clean it off really good, we spray uh, rubberized undercoating to seal it, okay? Um, we're going to replace these because they're rotted out. And, the, and, and normal, it's rotted out up there. No big deal, all right? You take the, take the seat pedestals up, and you say, well, do I have to replace the floor? Look, 
you got to pull the carpet up. You got to pull the carpet up and look. Since we can see light, that'll have to go. All right? You say, well, where's the heat coming from? Well, it's coming from there, it's coming from here. It's not a sealed cavity, right? So, it's important if you want to keep the heat out of your engine, um, from your engine in the inside, replace those. And if you pull this up and you see light, replace the deck. It's not a big deal. You strip it down to this, you don't have to take the floor out. <laughs> but you strip it down to this, take these screws out, and take it out. As everybody asks, what's this for? You know, there's an aluminum, there's aluminum plate here attached to the frame. They did the cutout and everything. Honestly, I have no idea why it's there. Um, could have been some idea they had about, I don't know, maybe, the, I don't know. I have no idea. But it um, doesn't hurt to leave it, so you take all the screws out, pull the wood out, put a new piece in. So, you want to seal the compartment, okay? Now, you say, that up there is just plain metal. That's just a, a, a piece of aluminum with a little bit of insulation on it. There's a lot of heat coming in that, right? And when this engine cover goes down, this gasket right here, if anywhere like up in there, anywhere that it leaks, you want to sheet the heat down under the coach, not inside. All those screw holes, see all those screw holes? You can see light? A screw hole that big will blow a huge amount of air into the coach. Okay? So when this thing gets done, all those holes need to be filled up. You know? You don't, you know, you got your uh, super sport or something, you're romping around town. You're not kind of worried about it, you know, it's no big deal. You get out on the highway four hours, all that air's coming in. Okay? So you want to block all that stuff. Go outside, look at everywhere that has a hole. Blop it. Seal it. Okay? Now, what about if you had a 6.5 GM turbo diesel down there and you're sitting on top of it and trying to talk? <laughs> what are we going to do now? <clears throat> There's some material that we use. Uh, it's, uh, I'll think of the... the uh, I'll think of the name of the, the manufacturer in a minute. It's called One Pound Sheet Goods. What it is, it's, it's a layer of stuff. First, it has a, a <clears throat> chrome mylar layer. Then it has a foam layer. Then it has a nylon, uh, high mass nylon layer. And then another layer of foam. Multiple layers take out multiple frequencies. And what do we do with it? With the foil on the top? No, 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 no. Turn it over. Foil on the bottom. As heat goes through that three-quarter inch plywood, any heat that comes through, you put the reflective right on top of it, and it'll reflect it back down. The one-pound sheet goods, one foot square, weighs one pound. When we did uh, the 6.5 turbo diesels I was talking about, we used two-pound sheet goods. <laughs> one foot square weighed two pounds. Should have seen the freight cost of a 4 by 8 sheet of that stuff. It wasn't real. But if you're going to block heat, the way, you, the, well, heat, but if you're going to block sound and heat, chromylar layer on top of sealed compartment, okay? Then the foam and all that. Now you say, man, that's expensive. And it is. <clears throat> Go to uh, Tractor Supply and buy a horse mat, <laughs> okay? They're not real cheap, <clears throat> but they're cheaper than... Um, I think of the manufacturer in a minute, um, not Nidacore. Uh, I'll think of it. Uh, anyway, a piece of horse mat. Might need to get two. You hug that horse mat all the way in there. Cut it out, put it in there. You can see the rubber mat down there, the floorboard. Take those aluminum pieces, trim pieces out. And by the way, don't lose those and put the screws right back in the same holes when you put them back in. Why? 
because I don't know what that aluminum is made out of, but it's double layer and it's harder than woodpecker lips. You can't put another hole in there easy. You'll make up new words. So when you take out those pieces, clean the holes out, know where they are. You could maybe insulate under the rubber, but put it all back in there and put those screws right back in, man. Don't lose those frame pieces. I do have a few. No, 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 I don't. Don't lose yours. <laughs> okay. The, the mats uh, are available in different places if you want to replace that. See that big old hole in the mat over there? You can see light. That's got to be sealed. See what I mean? So you contour a horse mat all the way down, all the way down, all the way down, down to here, then a piece down to here, then a piece here, and a piece here. Seal them together. Now, you won't have heat. If you have a 6.5 turbo diesel, you'll have to go to two-pound sheet goods, maybe a horse mat too. I don't know. But a normal engine for us normal, uh, you know, uh, mere mortals, horse mat, sealed, new wood, you won't have a problem. Okay? Now, as far as the heat goes on a header, yeah, the first thing people think of is headers is, oh, man, those Saturday night specials, spaghetti headers, man, heat coming off of those. They do. I love the name spaghetti header. Isn't that cool? But if you've seen them, where you know, hot rodders where the pipes go all over the place. And all, those create heat, right? The only header ever made for a GMC, because it's very important, was uh, Doug Thorley. And Doug Thorley had this tri-wide design. In other words, two pipes went into one, then... Those two went into one. It's called a tri-Y. So it really scavenged off the heat. It's not the thin metal like a clacking sound like, uh, you know, these Saturday Night Special headers. It's thin metal, thick metal, tri-Y design, free flow design. Okay. They even have it uh, with uh, the uh, powder coat on it, if you like. Or uh, They don't heat up the compartment. That's basically what I'm saying. And manifolds are dropping like flies. And the first thing people say, hot rods, oh man, you're going to put headers in there, it's going to get hot. No, it's not. Not in this application. Not with those headers. And not with this motorhome. Look at this thing. That motor is in the open. It's all plastic in there. The heat, you want that heat to scavenge down. And it blows right out. Over the wheel wells. There's a slot down at the bottom, at the bottom of the front plastic uh, wheel liner. The heat goes out. Now, you've seen these, these vents on the side of the coach. Now, that's not a bad idea because each time you bend air, it loses 50%. So if the air is coming over that wheel liner and going down and going out, that's cool. But if it came here and it went out this way, it might get a little cooler. Not that it's going to make any huge difference. But if you're, if you're in Arizona and you're worried about heat and all this, well, a couple of vents. Now, you want to use the ones that have three louvers, not the five or six louver, because there's only an area about that big on this side over here where the air could come out. When you make it longer, then you compromise the, the uh, strength of that, front, that uh, fender, that plastic fender, because it gets too close over here. So if you're going to put vents, use the short vents, okay? Um, so I, all of these things go together. See, there's not one magic bullet, okay? <clears throat> You've got to get rid of the airflow. You've got to seal the compartment. Now, you know, you say, wow, why is air come out of the ashtray when I open? Of course, the bottom of the ashtray is rotted out. You know that. When you open the ashtray and air comes out. What is that about? Right there. Right there. You see where this piece is welded together, air is behind that, in that little crack right there, because it goes out here, the body goes on it, and is glued to this thing, and what's happened? It popped loose, because there's nothing down here holding it, so it popped loose, and the fender blows out. There it is! Air's coming in. Get rid of your chipmunk cheeks, seal the outside corners to keep the air out of here. If you keep the air out of here, you keep the air out of there. You keep the air out of here. It won't be hot. All right. So, Elizabeth, 
This doesn't have to be there. This is pull the engine out. <laughs> um, that's about insulating the front. Uh, if you guys have tried other things, there's a lot of ways to skin this cat. Sorry, Scarlett. Uh, let me know what you did. You know, you're trying to block out air movement and you're trying to, to insulate by different layers of massive materials. Okay. All right. Well, look, thanks. Thanks for your time. I hope this uh, was helpful. Whoops. Uh, <laughs> Camera ran out of battery. What can I say? I ended with thanks, thanks for your time and uh, ranch hands. Thanks for uh, your support. And these are the kind of things we want to do. You give me some ideas. That's a really good one, Elizabeth. I really appreciate it. And um, we had a perfect opportunity to show you why. Okay, to show you why it's getting hot in there. Well, it's getting noisy in there. A little hole lets in a lot of noise too. All right. Well, look. We'll see you next time. Thanks.